There's a lot more to sends than just the send knob and its associated bus assignment menu. So starting with this tutorial, I'm going to show you important details and features of sends, everything from how to turn them on and off to the various settings that will open up all kinds of technical and creative possibilities for you. I'm also going to show you some shortcuts for tracing the signal flow from a send to its destination. I'll also be explaining such things as why some sends are colored blue and others are colored gray, why some sends have the knob on the right and others on the left, why, for instance, in send slot one, I don't have all the sends assigned to the same bus, why I've got two sends sending to the same bus on this channel, what's behind all these other options in the bus assignment menu, such as post pan, post fader, and pre fader, and why you might want to activate sends on auxes. So let's start out by looking at gray and blue sends. Gray means that the send is off and blue means that the send is on. When the send is off, signal never gets to leave the channel. It basically never gets beyond the send knob and into the bus and then onto its destination. Speaking of which, now even though it may seem obvious, okay, let's say bus, come on, bus, <laughs> you try to point to something and it disappears. Bus four is sending to this aux and you can see it because it says B4, right? Bus four, before you'd think it'd be easy to just match up the bus on the send with the label on the destination. Well, okay, I guess you could do that. Or to make the labeling even more clear, you could go over here to the make the channel strips wider button, which I'm sure isn't the official name, but when you click on it, it expands the channel strips and then you can see the full name for the bus appear on the aux and that should make matching up the send to the aux easier, right? Well, yeah, that makes it easier, but the easiest way is to get logic to show you the destination, and you do that by double clicking on the sends bus assignment menu. So if I double click on the menu for send one, it shows me aux one is the destination. I love this feature, and it's particularly invaluable on really large projects such as this film score queue. As you can see, there are a ton of channel strips with the auxes being all the way over here on the right. But if the channel strip I'm working on happens to be all the way over on the left and I want to see what's going on with an aux, well, all I've got to do is double click on the send and it scrolls the mixer page and highlights the aux. So let's go back to the other project now and look at the on off switches. So as you saw me do previously, the on off switch is this little power button icon on the send itself and turning them on and off can inspire a lot of creativity. I'm just gonna make this louder. There we go. So we're hearing this uh, pretty boring synth track. And I'm gonna turn on send one. Double clicking on the send highlights aux one, which as we can see is hosting a stereo delay. Okay, that gave it some life. Now I'm gonna turn on send four. And if I double click on the menu, logic shows me that I'm sending signal to aux three, which is hosting reverb. Okay, next I'm gonna turn on send two. Now this is sending signal to aux2, which is hosting a Space Designer reverb, amongst other things. But the Space Designer is doing most of the work. This particular setting, Daybreak, happens to shift pitches up an octave and generate other notes as well as wash out the sound. I really love this effect. Now I'm gonna turn on Send 3. This is sending signal to aux four. And the primary constituent here is this vocal transformer. And it's set to robotize mode, which generates artificial notes, in this case, an 
A sharp 2 in response to whatever signal is coming into it. Now the aux that's hosting the stereo delay itself has a send. Indeed, auxes can have sends too. And if I double click on it, we see that it's sending signal to another aux hosting another stereo delay. So the delays from aux 1 will themselves be delayed, and those delays will run into the fuzzwa. And the fuzzwa will give the delayed delays a very synthesizer-like filter equality. Like this. And finally, let's go back to the aux that's hosting the vocal transformer. This also has a send on it, sending signal to this uh, combination of delay and fuzzwa. And a really kind of funky rhythm develops when I send that robotized note into this delay. 